morning. morning. I've done that without breaking it this week. That must be a first. How are you? Are you well? Yes. Welcome to all of you, whether you've been here 150 times or whether this is your first uh, time here with us. It's lovely to see you. Uh, welcome along. Um, it's lovely to have you. Um, today uh, we will be doing uh, some, we'll be singing some hymns. We've got the Sunday school starting for the very first uh, time in 18 months. Um, which will be lovely. Uh, so the guys are going to go out to Sunday school midway through, so don't get concerned about that if people start getting up and leaving. It is just the Sunday school head now, okay? Why don't you turn to the people round about you and say good morning and welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to start this morning by uh, reading uh, to you from. This is what happens when you drop all your. Uh, bits the bits and pieces. pieces. <laughs> I'm going to uh, start to read by uh, Ephesians two, Ephesians chapter two. Ephesians 2. Once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins. You used to live in sin, just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers of, uh, in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. All of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires uh, and inclinations of our sinful nature. But our very nature by our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. But God is so rich in mercy. And he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. For he raised us from the dead, along with Christ, and seated us with him in the heavenly realms, because we are united with Christ Jesus. So God can, put, God can point to us in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness towards us, as shown in all he has done for us, who are united with Christ Jesus. God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we've done. So none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. So we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Don't forget that you Gentiles used to be outsiders. You were called uncircumcised heathens by the Jews who were proud of their circumcision, even though it affected only their bodies and not their hearts. In those days, you were living apart from Christ. You were excluded from the citizenship among the people of Israel, and you did not know the, co the covenant promises God had made to them. You lived in this world without God and without hope. But now you have been united with Christ Jesus. Once you were far away from God, but now you have been brought near to him through the blood of Christ. For Christ himself has brought peace to us. He has united Jews and Gentiles into one people when in his own body on the cross, he broke down the wall of hostility that separated us. He did this by ending the system of the law with its commandments and regulations. He made peace, peace between the Jews and the Gentiles by creating himself one new people from the two groups. Together as one body, Christ reconciled both groups to God by means of his death on the cross and their, and their hostility towards each other was put to death. He brought this good news of peace to you Gentiles who were far away from him. 
and peace to the Jews who were near him. Not all of us can come to the Father. Now all of us can come to the Father through the same Holy Spirit because of what Christ has done for us. So now you Gentiles are no longer strangers and foreigners. You are citizens along with all of God's holy people. You are members of God's family. Together we are his house, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. And the cornerstone is Christ Jesus himself. We are carefully joined together in him, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. Through him, you Gentiles are also being made part of this dwelling where God lives by his Spirit. I was wondering, given the fight that we had over the sugary things last week, and given that we're doing a rend one, mm -hmm. that maybe people might like some sugary things now. Would you like some sugary things? Yes. Yes, you yes, would. Boys, can you do this sort of like you did last week? Wonderful. If you'd like a sugary thing, put your hand up and wave at the boys. While we do that, let me go through with you some notices and things for this week. Today uh, we will go through our service as normal uh, and we will have our break as normal when we'll go through to the back for tea and coffee. Um, if you would like to do that, you're very welcome to, to join us for the tea and for the coffee. After we've done that, we're going to come back in here uh, and we'll take uh, communion together. So if you love the Lord, you are more than welcome uh, to come and do that with us as well. <laughs> this week, there is no guitar group on Monday, so please don't come along expecting uh, to have guitar session because there will be none. Um, the craft group, uh, oh, hang on, Monday also. Don't worry, I didn't forget. Uh, the Women's Fellowship is tomorrow, um, Monday, uh, 1.45 here at Coastline, uh, and they will be welcoming Michelle Livingston, who has been before, um, but now works for Blytheswood, um, which is really good because we are also in the middle of our Blytheswood shoebox appeal. You'll notice that at the back, uh, as you go out um, where the door is, the shoeboxes and bags are starting to build up. Um, the date for the shoeboxes is the 7th of November. We need them back here for the 7th of November so they can all get uh, loaded into the lorry uh, and be off to Eastern Europe. Um, so Women's Fellowship, all uh, ladies welcome to that one uh, to hear about the work of Blytheswood um, from Michelle Livingston. Tuesday uh, will be the craft group. Uh, on here as normal. Uh, Wednesday we will have the prayer meeting here. Uh, Daniel will be back um, so he will be uh, leading the, the, the prayer meeting on Wednesday evening. It was lovely Wednesday evening past just to share some time with uh, a few of us. So please do come along, get involved in the prayer meeting uh, this week. Um, it's just lovely to just spend that time together uh, in prayer. Um, what else do we have? Oh, deacons meeting, thank you. Deacons meetings on Tuesday. Um, so deacons come uh, on Tuesday, that's at 7 o'clock uh, in the cafe. Um, Friday, Friendship Club uh, is back after 18 months uh, of no soup. Uh, we're finally allowed uh, to be back uh, and having soup. So that's the 22nd of October. Have I already got people for the, for the soup? One soup, two soup. Great. Don't worry, the rest of you will all get a chance in the coming weeks uh, as we restart back the Friendship Club. So the Friendship Club starts this Friday. Come along, you don't need to book or anything like that. Get a bowl of soup, get a bladder together uh, and have some time of fellowship. If you live in Crail uh, or are travelling through Crail, Crail, the following week the Friendship Club will kick off in Crail. That's the 29th of October, Friday same times as here at Coastline, exactly the same uh, format that we'll be doing it in Crail as part of our outreach there. So if you want to get involved, uh, it'd be lovely to have as many of you along as possible in Crail. That would be lovely. Um, I think that possibly is all the information. 
Usually somebody shouts at me at this point, so that's good. That must mean we've got everything. Let's pray together uh, before we hand over to the worship team and to Frank, uh, who is our uh, preacher today. Let's pray together. Loving God, we thank you for this time that we can spend together. We thank you that we can come together like this in one place, as one family, to give our praise and our worship to you. Father, this morning we would pray for the Sunday school as they uh, start once again after 18 long months. We pray that they would have uh, a good time getting to know each other again uh, and renewing uh, friendships. Father, we would pray for each of us this morning. We pray that you would give us open hearts as we open your word once again. We pray for Frank this morning as he brings the message uh, that you have given him to us this morning. Father, we pray all these things in your name. Amen. Okay, honorary children, in celebration of the Sunday school starting, you're all honorary children again for another Sunday morning. Let's stand and sugar and worship.
Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, just for those who are uh, fortunate, I'll introduce myself. There's a number of people who've known me for a very long time. They're still getting treatment. Is that right, David? <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I'm a member here, because uh, I'm saying that because there are one or two folks that I don't recognise. Uh, but that's because we've been elsewhere for a, a couple of weeks, a few weeks. So, nice to be here. It's a fair time since I, I think I've preached here, um, so I hope I haven't forgotten how you folks react. <laughs> now, just one more thing. I'm, can you hear me okay? Yes. Because this, I was laughing at Dave trying to put this on with three things. He had a mask, a pair of glasses, and this. It took me most of the first part of the service to discover that you put it on the back of your head <laughs> and not on the top. Oh. The microphone would go. <laughs> so, you coming through loud and clear? Yeah. yeah. Do I look like a pop star? Uh, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> right, okay. Seriously. Um, let, let's read together. Uh, we had a, a fairly long reading in Ephesians 2, but one of the important things when we gather together is that we do read the Bible together. Um, so I'm going to read just a few verses this time, again from Ephesians. I'm reading from uh, chapter 4, verses 7 down to verse 13. But to each one of us grace has been given as Christ apportioned us. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he led captives in his train and gave gifts to men. What does he ascended mean except that he descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers to prepare them, people, God's people for works of service. So that the body of Christ may be built up until we reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. And we thank God for reading his word. Let's just pray for a moment. Our God and our Heavenly Father, we ask that you would attune our hearts and minds to hear what you have to say. Father, I ask that the words that I say may be the words that you want me to. And Father, that those of us who are listening may hear what you and the Spirit are saying. Father, we ask that you would make us attentive. And after that, we ask that you would make us practical in your service. Father, help your work to accomplish what you sent out to do. Make us hearers and doers. This we ask in Jesus' name. And for his sake. Amen. I'm upside down. Am I still coming through? Well, I'm not going to move them because if I do, my head might fall off. Right, now, I need just one wee bit of help because the kids are going to go out for Sunday school, but um, I need something. Let me see. Tell you. You two boys just stay there. And could you come out and... Are you going to earn some wages? Is that okay? That's fine. Elaine, could you go out and get a hand just in case? You're not getting any wages. Oh. That's okay. See, I've got a problem here. I'll give you this bag. Could you put all that wood that's over there into it and just move it out of the road because the band's going to truck over it. There's a big stack of wood over there. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, you can carry the bag. Okay. Right, gently. Remember, I'm paying the wages. If they any of it, it's coming off the wages. Thank you very much. Did I say I'd pay you? Right, just stick it down that over at the door. Oh, let's hold on a minute. Hold on. Did I say I was going to pay you? Oh, well, you be all right. Hold your hand up. One, two. There you go. Is that all right? Thank you. Oh, did you not get anything? Yeah. Oh, come here. <laughs> All right. 
So you're not chasting. Yeah. Yeah, one for you and one for you. I'll tell you what, I'll give you a wee bonus. Aha, uh -huh. you can ask me about these later on. Aha. Uh -huh. Right, thank you very much. Now, when are the Sunday school allowed to go out then, Dave? Right, you folks are allowed to go, and apparently you're starting Sunday school after 18 months. So, do you remember how Sunday school works? No. That's fine, you can go then. <laughs> and I'm checking if anybody else leaves at this point who's got nothing to do with Sunday school, I'll send Dave to bring you back. I also leave. you leave as well? Right, okay. Let's come to look a wee bit closer at what uh, we've been reading today. <clears throat> I love August and December because my birthday and our anniversary, Christy has the same anniversary as me, which is really interesting. <laughs> uh, and I love December because it's Christmas, because I love gifts. It's great to give things, I love giving presents, but it's absolutely brilliant to get them. Yes? Yeah. Yes. I can't remember when Father's Day is, but I don't get stuff very often. My sons are extremely forgetful. So I'll need to remind them of the incoming year. But gifts are what you get. You'll see that it, the two of the boys didn't do any work, did they? No. And I gave them something. That was my choice. I gave them it's a gift. Right? Okay? So, that's what we're going to look at. It tells us in the first reading that, that Dave read that we are saved through faith. And it's not our own work, it's the gift of God. Yes? We all know that off by heart. But let me do a wee bit of correcting just now. Just to help us to be absolutely clear what we're talking about. It does say it's not by works so that we can't boast we are God's workmanship. We are saved by grace. It's the gift of God. The actual, and I don't read a lot of Greek, the actual Greek says it's not that it's the gift of God but that it's God's gift. Now you might think I'm splitting hairs, but I'm not. I always think, and I hope you do too, I know that's how the scriptures put it, we always put God first. The tr trouble is that we start thinking about the gift, and we begin to love the gift, rather than the person who has given it. So the way that it's in the original text, that it said it's God's gift, is the way I really like it. Because it keeps the focus in exactly the right place. On God first, and you and me afterwards. Remember that being here is good for us, but we come to honour God, and we get the overflow. Yeah? God first. So, that's the, that the main thing I need us to get in our head, that none of what we are talking about, in getting, being given salvation, forgiveness, and our promise of a home in heaven, and the equipping to live and do good works here is all from God. And you can't buy it. You can't work for it. The scriptures are very, very plain that we've got a gift. Now, what's that gift? Well, I've mentioned a number of things, but the, the, the real key one is that we were dead and we didn't know it. We... The, the, another part of the scriptures, Corinthians, kind of, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, kind of outlines what's said here. It says, you used to live like this and do all the, this stuff. Well, let me just give you a wee bit. Um, idolaters, adulterers, thieves, drunks, slanderers, and swindlers don't get to heaven. That's just a wee list of the kind of wrong things you've done. If you've done any of them, put your hand up. No, don't bother. Don't bother. <laughs> God knows. But the important thing is we used to live like that. That's how dead folk lived. Folks who had no life in themselves. 
And the gift that God has given us, we have been made alive in Christ. We've been made alive in Christ. The scriptures say in Old and New Testament, God's the God of the living and not of the dead. So what God has done through Jesus is he's raised us from being dead and lost in our sins to being alive in Christ. That allows us to do the good works. You don't, dead things don't do much at all. Why did God do this? It tells us in our passage that he did it out of his great love. He did it out of his grace. Now grace and love are very similar. We, in fact, grace is described as God's loving kindness. He loves, and because he loves, he does something about it. You and I dead in our trespasses and sins, dead doing all this stuff that we thought actually made us alive. God's expressed his kindness and his love towards you in Jesus. Jesus went to the cross and died for us. We could not save ourselves. Do you get it? It's God's gift. You cannot buy it. You cannot get it any other way than that God gives it. Now, I need to clear something up too. There are some of you who say, but it says we're saved through faith. Surely the faith is ours. Oh, no. Sorry. I don't, don't think that's right. Let me, let me explain it this way. We're dead and we're not interested. Because we're dead. So God, if you like, awakens us. Begins to stir us up. Sometimes we call it, he makes us uncomfortable. Been there? Think so. And uh, Until you, you get an itch and then God scratches where it itches. But God is the one who arouses or awakes you. God makes us begin to think and inquire. You know, like Nicodemus, he read a bit in the Bible and how to be born again and all these kind of things. And, you know, we begin to think and inquire. God begins to work in our mind, having roused and awakened us. Then God gives us the forgiveness. He then gives us the strength to act, to ask for salvation. And then God provides that new life. So, if you're saying it, okay, it's grace, but it's because I exercise faith. Even the faith originates with God. Yes? Yes. So, I'm glad you straightened that out. So, what I'm trying to say at the beginning here is, it's a gift. Your salvation came because God loved you, Christ died for you, and God wanted to make you a present of a life that you could never have without him. Fantastic. I get a wee bit excited about this kind of stuff. In other words, you're saved and you're delivered from the things that hold you back. You get a new relationship with God and with each other. And that's important because we're going to come to look at something else. Danny quite often gets me a wee bit uptight. He, he, you know, he's got his text and then he goes sideways and he begins to talk about something else. And I keep saying, Danny, stop! Because you're about to preach my sermon. <laughs> That's it. I said it to him before he went away. He actually, at the end of when he was preaching two weeks ago, mentioned that you and I were a gift to each other. Totally seemed, seemed to me at the time out of context. But I was, I was desperately keen that there was a link somewhere between Revelation and what we're doing today. And Danny began to talk about, just briefly, about us being a gift to each other. God meaning us to be here. Let's move on then. Now that God has given us that gift of salvation, what happens next? Well, God doesn't ask you to do stuff for him without equipping you for it. We could have been saved and whipped off to heaven so we couldn't cause any more harm. No, that's not right. 
No, it's, we were kept here so that we could actually be ambassadors for Jesus. That we could tell other folks, this happened to me and it can happen to you. It's just, it can be as simple as that. But God wouldn't want folks to do that on their own strength. If God brought us to faith and God equipped us and God has saved us, he makes sure that we're not going out without being prepared. It said in our second reading that when Christ rose and he had defeated Satan, it says that he ascended in high and led his cap, led, led captives in his train and gave gifts to men. Now that's thought as a Roman general like Julius Caesar or Pompey or some of these folks coming back and uh, you've seen it on the telly. They've got the forum out there and all the big buildings all gleaming white and down come, come, out come the trumpeters and then in comes somebody on a chariot, it's the general. And then his army's marching behind him and then some captives that he's got on campaign and then all the treasure. And part of what happens, there are folks walk along and they've got the, the money chests open and they're throwing stuff out to people. That's the idea. It's a celebration of triumph. And Jesus' celebration of triumph is to give gifts to men. But it's not gold and silver. It's people. It's people. We see our passage goes on, it says that when he, when he gave gifts to men, he gave to the church. And I'll read it to you. He gave some prophets, he gave some evangelists, pastors and teachers to prepare God's people for works of service. So God, not only giving you the gift of salvation, but he gifts the church, his body, people to help the church to grow to be taught to know more about God to know more, more about the Lord Jesus and dare say to know more about ourselves too but that's, that's what's here clearly it says that God to fulfill his purposes for the church to be a light in the world wants it strong doesn't want it wavering wants it unified and he gives gifts to men and here the gifts are teachers, prophets, evangelists, pastors. I mean, I know a really great evangelist. Danny. Danny is an evangelist. When he preaches, he manages to talk about Jesus every single time and he doesn't miss the mark. I don't know that I'm necessarily an evangelist. I'm great to talk to people face to face. I can stand up and, and teach. But I don't know if I'm an evangelist. You see, isn't it fortunate that God has given a lot of us with gifts? In fact, I'll come to that a bit stronger in a moment. It's not one person's got them all. But, as it said, but each one of us, by his grace, has given us Christ a portion of it. In other words, why have I got this gift? Because that's the one that Jesus gave you. Why have I not got that one? Because that's not the one he gave you. We are doubly gifted then. We're gifted with salvation. We didn't work for it. God gave it to us. We need to take it. And then God gifted us as his family, as his church, by giving us the people we need to help teach us and lead us and guide us. Now, you're going to sit there and say, well, that doesn't help me, because I'm not a pastor, nor a teacher, nor am I an evangelist, or, we well, don't underrate yourself, a lot of us are evangelists without knowing it. We're supposed to gossip the gospel, mention it when we can. Let's make sure that we don't leave any of you out. Can I please ask you, if you have a Bible, to turn with me to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12 and 
read from verse, I'm going to read from verse 3 down to verse 8, if you can follow with me. Here's this word again, God's kindness and generosity that makes him gift to people like you and me. For by the grace given to me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. Just as each of us has one body with many members, these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. Listen to this. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it's serving, let him serve. If it's teaching, let him teach. If it's encouraging him, let him encourage. If it's contributing to the need of others, let him give generously. And if it's leadership, let him govern diligently. And if it's showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. You're all in there. Every single one of us. This is where I, I need to remind you of something. That it tells us in the Bible that we're not our own, we're bought with a price. We're all happy to accept that we belong to Jesus in that case. Are you happy to accept what the Bible says here? Each member belongs to each other. You don't just belong to Jesus. You belong to each other. You are not your own. Got it? You are part of what we call the body of Christ. You cannot opt out of the body. In fact, that you are here in this particular example of the body of Christ, a group of believers that God has brought together, is part of God's gift to you. You might think you're here today because you felt like coming. You might think you're a member of this church because it happened to be fairly near where you, you got your house. But let me say to you that you're here for me and me for you. And we constitute each individual who Christ has saved. Because we don't get group saving. Each one of us who saved by the Lord Jesus individually are put together in a body and that body is gifts. What did it say here? We have different gifts. It doesn't say here, uh, excuse me if I pick one up, pick on two folks. Phyllis, it doesn't say here, Phyllis doesn't have any gifts. And it doesn't say Rosemary uh, has more gifts than Phyllis has got. All it says is we all have different gifts. Put your hand up any ungifted Christian. Oh, that, that, went, that went really well. Because we are all gifted. Jesus gave us a gift. Now, in case you're saying, wait a minute, hold on, I'm not a leader. And it's down here. Listen to what it says. It is, the Bible is not written for your entertainment. It may be quite entertaining, I enjoy it. But it's written to help us to understand what God has done and what we've, we are meant to do subsequently. It says here, if, you're, if your gift is serving, let him serve. If it's teaching, let him teach. If it's encouraging, encourage. If it's contributing to each other, let him contribute generously. If it's, your gift is showing mercy, do it. Let him do it cheerfully. It doesn't say if you can get round to it, if you feel like it. It says if your gift that Jesus has given you is such and such, do it. So if it's teaching, teach. If it's encouraging, encourage. If it's serving, tell you what. If it's not teaching, don't teach. If it's not encouraging, don't try to encourage. Discover in, in the, this church what your gift is. 
and use it. That's what the Bible is telling us. God's gifted us. We are restored. We're forgiven. That's the gift. He's, he, he's given other people as gifts to build up the church. But he's given it to all of us. I love it when the, when the Bible makes sure that nobody gets off with it. It says, if it's showing mercy, let them do it cheerfully. Showing mercy means being absolutely sensitive to the needs of others. That's what we can all do. So if you don't think you're on this list, I'm sorry, you are. You don't belong to yourself. You don't have the option of not using your gift. You will harm the church if you don't use it. Rather than building it up. Now, I know there's a lot that we've talked about there, but let's get it. It's all about God. Remember how we came in? It is not the gift of God, it's God's gift. God first. I loved to listen to stories when I was a kid about people like Elijah. You know, and the, the one where the, the birds come in and feed him. Why did he not get fed forever? Why did the burn dry up? Because he'd have got to the stage that he'd have loved the gift and the, the free food and the free water and forgotten about trusting and depending on God who gave him everything in the first place. We need to be very careful that we don't fall into the trap of loving having a gift and forgetting our God who gave it. I hope you're encouraged by this.
I would invite you to remain with us in the second part of the service. We're going to break now for tea and coffee, but please do return and be with us through communion, even if you don't feel able to take communion at this time. Um, but we will be doing it uh, as we did two weeks ago when we will come up and be served. So we're making it as safe as we can. But even if you don't feel comfortable doing that yet, please, please do remain with us. And remember the gift of God in Jesus. We can't see it because the light isn't shining through the cross, but it is there. And you would be most welcome. So before we go for tea and coffee, I think we should just listen to the meditation that I'll prepare. It is thank you for saving me. And then after that, if you can, not all crowd at once, but go through to take the tea and coffee. Thank you. This is not our table. This is not the church's table. This is Jesus' table. And he invites all to come. Come as you are. With all your hurts, all your anxieties, all your faults, all your feelings. Come. Here at the table you can set them down. Here at the table you can find the forgiveness and the fresh start that you need. Come with all your joys and your hopes. Find that in Jesus there is a greater hope. There is a fuller joy. 
and there is a love that will never let you go. Come to his table. He stands here with nail-pierced hands. He paid the price that we could not. And this feast is his gift to us. Come with love. Come with joy. And when we are done, know that this is just this time. And there will be a time when we will meet together at the bridal feast of the Lamb. <coughs> and the bridegroom will say, Welcome home, my beloved child. Until then, let us serve him with joy and gladness and the power and the strength that he gives us. And as we share in communion, let us recognize the gifts that we have in each other. For he has made us family. May he be praised for all his wonderful gifts to us. Amen. I hope you still have your sugary thing. The very, 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 very end one needs lots and lots of sugary things and energy. So I hope you had plenty of that caramel shortbread to give you the sugar rush that you're going to need. In the meantime, before we come to the table, there will be two songs together. So we will start standing, but if you do need to sit down, please feel free to do that as appropriate to your needs. Please rise. <coughs>
Thank you.
Let me read a little to you from a very well-known part, and then I'm going to read a bit that isn't read so often. I'm reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and this is how it begins. Paul writes, For I received from the Lord, which I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, The cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Now we often read that, but we don't often read the next bit. So let me read the, the next bit. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. A man ought to examine himself before he eats the bread and drinks the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognising the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment to himself. Now the reason I read that latter part is it's very much in keeping with what we were thinking about earlier. It says that if we eat in an unworthy manner and drink in an unworthy manner, in other words, without showing the proper respect to the Lord Jesus, that's why it says the blood and the body of the Lord Jesus, we, we're condemning ourselves. It la then says that if you eat without recognising the body of Jesus, you've also bring yourself into judgment. The second reference is about the body, not the blood and body of Jesus, but the body of Jesus. In other words, you and I should be in communion. In other words, we should love each other, respect each other, honour each other, thank God for the gifts that each of us have. No jealousy, envy or anything. That is showing respect for the body of Jesus. So, welcome to communion. All of us. No one can forbid you to be here. The Lord invited you. But remember, we're in communion. You can't have communion very easily on your own. It needs to be at least two of you. <coughs> two or three gathered together in I am. But we need to respect the Lord himself and each other as we come to communion. <coughs> Just let me move this. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we did this. What we're going to do is, we're going to come out. Dave will give me a hand with that. And we'll come round and we'll have the bread and wine. We'll take it together. Return to our seats. And you may eat as you are ready. Don't wait for everyone. Okay? You may eat when you are ready to eat. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do what the Lord did. I'm going to give thanks. And then we will take communion together. Our God and our Heavenly Father, it is so amazing to be able to do the things that the Lord Jesus did and still does. Father, we bless you that there's one thing he says he's not doing at the moment, and that's having the bread and wine. He said he's reserving that till we're seated with him in his kingdom. So, Father, we thank you that we are able to be obedient to him, to come today and to remember him in all his ways, not just his death on the cross, but everything that he showed us about you, his Father. Father, we bless you for the love that put him on the cross, for his willingness to die and the effectiveness of that death. We stand forgiven at the cross. Father, we remember that Jesus had to die, 
had to be hot, had to be windy for our sakes. And Father, as we think of him dying, his blood being shed, his body being broken, we know it was for us. There was no other good enough to pay the price of sin. He only could unlock the gate of heaven and let us in. So Father, accept our thanks for being able to be your people and being able to share together in this love feast. We give you our thanks in the Lord Jesus' name. Amen. On the night he was betrayed, and I always find that a, such a humbling thing. If we were facing some of the stuff that Jesus was going to face, not that we could have gone to the cross, but it, we'd have been preoccupied. Jesus was, but with us. You know, his thoughts were not all about himself, they were about us. The night he was betrayed, he even told us to do this because he knows what a forgetful people do this in remembrance of me. So, let's do that. Dave, can you assist, please? Yes, I think you will. Right, excuse us, we'll serve the folks who've got to be served first. Now, if you are unable to come out, just indicate to me, and I'll come around and serve you. Is that okay? So if you're unable, yeah, that's fine. Okay, thank you.
let's just pause for a couple of minutes. It says on the front of that table, do this and remember us. Let's make sure we make it wider than just remembering Christ dying for us. There's so many things to remember that Jesus said and did. Let's just remember our Lord for a moment or two. We all have different things to thank God for, but let's not stop, <laughs> let's keep doing it. We all have some songs to sing, I'm making apology for two mistakes. I forgot to do some of the hymns today. I was very gently told off. <laughs> and uh, the second one, some of you sitting near me have noticed I tried to drink the cup with my mask down. <laughs> I'm sure the Lord has a sense of humour as well. <laughs> Thank you.
let's see the grace to one another. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all. Amen. The Lord bless you. Well, you are Clapping, tickling, stopping your feet at all doors. This should be hot.
Thanks for me.